I want to share some updates I made to Excelsior the flashcard wizard. This is an app that I basically vibe coded a couple months ago to help people add images to their flashcards before importing them into Anki. Vibe coding, if you haven't heard of it before, is basically where you just tell an LLM like ChatGPT what you want to build and it goes ahead and writes all of the code for you. Because A, you're too lazy to do it yourself, or B, you're too much of a noob and you don't know how to do it yourself. It just so happens that I meet both of those criteria. The first version of this app was a combination of a Python script and a tricked out Excel document, which worked okay, but there were a few issues. For example, the library which I was using to communicate the data from the Python app to Excel kept breaking like every couple of weeks and the cache needed to be rebuilt. Also, relying on Excel was terrible because it meant that I would have to rewrite the entire code base to make it work on Mac and then rewrite it again to make it work on Linux and then it's just not a, not a, great, not a great solution. So these were high on the list of issues needing to be fixed. Luckily, the newest AI models are getting really, really good at coding. So I was able to redesign and rewrite the entire code base basically in less than 10 prompts or so. And as of the posting of this video, the app is still only working in Windows operating systems, but at least now the entire code base is cross-platform compatible. So all I just have to do now is, is basically package it up into the correct formats for Mac and Linux operating systems. You can get access to this app by signing up to the email list linked in the description. I promise I won't spam you, it just makes it easier for me to follow up with people about changes I'm making to the app, as well as to gather any feedback about whether it's helpful or not. So if you're interested, let me show you how to use it. You'll click on the link in an email, which you'll get from me after you sign up to the email list, and then you'll download the zip file from the Google Drive. Windows Defender will probably disable the download. Um, if your other antivirus software doesn't, you'll have to confirm that you do in fact trust me unzip it to a specific location that you can find again very easily, like to your desktop or just keeping it in your downloads folder is fine. Next, run the installer. Packaging this app in an installer was definitely overkill. It's like only a single file, but I hoped that this would help your antivirus trust it a little bit more. Spoiler alert, it does not. Choose to save the app to a specific location or just to your apps folder. The installer will run super quick, and it will also add a shortcut to the app on your desktop. Um, it then will create a couple of folders that the app will need in order to perform its functions, so don't delete them. The kick, if the app keeps getting quarantined whenever you try to run it, you'll have to Google how to allow certain applications with your particular antivirus software. I don't know how to help you there. I'll now give you a quick overview of the user interface, starting at the top with the folder path to Anki's collection.media folder. This is where we'll paste the file path to our media folder. I'll tell you where to find it in just a minute. On this second row here, we see all the details about the HTML links that we'll be generating, including a modifile prefix and suffix. I'll explain this in more detail in a bit as well. Next up, we have different modes that we can toggle on. Single mode will add just a single HTML link to the active cell, the cell that you've selected. If you try to add another image without moving to a different cell, it will give you an error. Multiple mode will just keep on adding HTML links to the active cell indefinitely. Use this one when you want to add more than one image to a single flashcard. We also have the target CSV column. This is where we define which column is going to be our images column, which one is going to contain our images in our flashcard. Then the flashcard wizard will only add links to this column. On the next row, we have a bunch of buttons that I really hope are self-explanatory, but we can load a CSV file when we have one that we've already been working on and we, we want to add images to it. We can start with just a blank five by five table like this one shown here. And when we're done adding links, we can export our edited CSV file. These other buttons will help you modify the table shown below. This is not actually a real table. This is just the contents of your CSV file arranged like a table. Just makes it easier for our feeble human brains to visualize. But using these other buttons, we can modify the structure of the CSV file by adding or deleting columns and rows. The column visibility lets you hide certain columns that you don't need to see while adding HTML links. 
I put this in here because I personally have some CSV files with flashcards that have a ton of fields, so it helps to be able to hide all that crap so that I don't have to scroll back and forth. Down here at the bottom, we have two very important buttons. The Start Clipboard Monitor. This actually starts the app and tells the little wizard man to start watching for images to hit our clipboard when we copy or take screenshots. And then the Move Images to Anki Collection.media button. This will tell the wizard to go ahead and move all of the images that you've captured into Anki's media folder so that they are ready to appear in your flashcards as soon as you import them. To get started, we need to define the path to our media folder so that Excelsior knows where to send the images. We can find this path super easy if we just open up the file browser. If we just type percent app data percent, this will take us to all of our app data. Anki is at the top because of the alphabet. So click on Anki 2, click on your specific user profile, and then voila, your media folder is right here. Just right click on the folder and select copy as path. Now, back in Excelsior, just paste that file path in this field here. Then, so you don't have to ever do that again, just click on the Save Path button. Now, let's talk more about this HTML link template. This is where we define what we want our HTML link prefix and suffix to be. When we copy the image, Excelsior will construct the HTML link dynamically by placing the image file name between these two strings of text. If you have no clue what an HTML link is, especially in the context of Anki and flashcard images, go ahead and check out this other video that I made linked in the description. Now, you can just leave the prefix alone. This is what it needs to be for Anki. If you know what you're doing, you can modify the suffix to be whatever you need it to be. It will default to include this class assignment of image gallery because this is a class that I use in a bunch of my flashcard templates because I include an image gallery which will display images one at a time. If you don't use any of my templates, then you technically don't need it in here and you can remove it, but having it in here won't hurt anything and it won't mess up your images. So you can leave it alone if you want. If you are using my templates, this will make it so that the gallery can pull the images inside the container and display them properly. If you have certain images that you don't want to be included in the gallery for whatever reason, so if you have images that you want to appear in, in an explanation or in a separate field entirely, then you should delete the class assignment. Otherwise, it's going to pull those images into the gallery. Now I'll walk you through a demonstration of how you might actually use this tool and what it looks like. So first, I think this app pairs very nicely with a PDF editor app called PDF Exchange Editor. They are the dream team, if you will. This app has a free version, which is what I use and I highly recommend it. This app allows you to edit PDFs almost as if they were Word documents. You can target specific elements like images simply by clicking on them. This means that you don't have to waste any time drawing a screen capture box around your images. You can just click on it, hit Control C or whatever keyboard shortcut you've programmed to copy stuff. So I'll start by loading up a CSV file full of flashcards that I need to add images to. I'll hide some of these columns that don't really matter just to give us a better view. Now, before I can start capturing images, I need to decide which column I want to be the images field. I'll pick this one. So I just go up here to set the target CSV column to the appropriate number. Now Excelsior will only place links in this column. Then you just select the cell where you want to start placing your links. I'll start with single mode here, and then we can start capturing images. For single mode, it will only do one link per cell or per flashcard. So you can just jump around when you find pictures that you want to place in your flashcards, um, but it won't place more than one link in a cell. This hopefully cuts down on you accidentally placing images in flashcards you didn't want to. Multiple mode will add multiple HTML links to a single card, and it will keep on going until you either switch modes or manually move to a different cell. If you want to see what's happening with the images that you're capturing, you can find the clipboard images folder, which should be somewhere on your desktop. Inside this folder, you'll find all of the stuff relevant to the Excelsior app, including the images folder. If you open that up, you'll be able to see all of the images that you've captured so far. You don't have to have this open, I'm just showing you what's happening in the background, but it may be a good idea to check this folder before moving your images to Anki, just to make sure you've got all the images you think you should have, but you don't necessarily have to. Speaking of moving images... Wait, what? Oh. Yeah, you're gonna have to delete these. Sorry that I didn't mention that before. I will 
I'll fix that <laughs> in the next version so that it will just work. But uh, for now, you got to delete your quotation marks. And then click on the images, move images button. Son of a... Do, 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 copy his path. Delete that crap. And now push the button. Yay. And then you're done. Excelsior just magically transported all of your images to the media folder. Now, when you import your flashcards into Anki, they will already have images in them. So like I mentioned before, this still only works with Windows. And I know there are a lot of you Mac users who would really like to try this out, but Reworking this whole app and removing the dependence on Excel really was the first major step towards making it cross-platform compatible. Now, every piece of code in the app should work fine on Mac and Linux. I just need to be able to package it up into the relevant formats, which I'm still working out how to do at the moment, but I'm much closer now that the code base is in a better spot, so stay tuned for that. Now it's time to get off the toilet and get back to studying.